general Q&A session. We have the baseline questions we've all lined up. We'll just ask those to get them out of the way so that people don't have to be creative with their questioning. So we'll just start going from uh, Mr. Kerno here going left. So when did you guys get to the comics and where did you learn your skills? Who is your daddy and what did he do? <laughs> Um, good Arnold reference. Uh, I went to NYU Film School where I basically learned that uh, doing films, you either have to have a lot of money or be willing to compromise a lot, and I didn't have a lot of the one and didn't want to do a lot of the other. Uh, I've always been a comic book nerd, so I thought, hey, I can get into storytelling and tell the stories I want to tell uh, through comic books. So I uh, took an internship at IDW and kind of worked my way up the ladder uh, that way, and here I am. That is quite the ladder. Well, I actually went to school for animation, and then I discovered I really don't like animating. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of effort. So, um, well, comics has always been like a big part of my life. And I was like, hey, I mean, this seems like it would be kind of cool. And I was friends with people that were already in the industry. And I befriended James Stoko through a, like a comic website. And years later, he would end up needing to do Godzilla's Half Century War for IDW. And then he was like, hey, I need help with flats, so I was like, hey, I can help. So he introduced me to Bobby, and from there I got to work on Turtles and Pony and stuff, so it was, uh, yeah. was kind of quick and easy for me. I uh, also went to school for animation and decided I didn't want to do that because it's super hard. <laughs> and also comics were always a big part of my life, and so uh, I drew, I had a, a regular job, I worked for a TV station, and I drew a comic book that was about me. It was sort of like an autobiographical comedy uh, one-shot. And uh, that, I, that came out and sold like 800 copies uh, in the direct market. And then I decided, like, I make comics now. So I quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just went way broke for several years. And I just sort of... Uh, banged around the sides of comics doing independent stuff and coloring and lettering and whatever and uh, and then eventually I uh, started doing some other stuff and eventually that led to uh, My Little Pony. Tony, I don't, I don't remember. How did you get started with Pony? Did you just like come up to me or how did that happen? Uh, <laughs> this is a funny story. <laughs> I, first I was uh, Josh Fialkov introduced us about doing an issue of Turtles that he never ended up doing. Barbara ended up doing it. It was April O'Neil. I, I did sample pages We're for so that one. I know. We, we could have been there years <laughs> earlier. Uh, and then Nickelodeon thought I was too cartoony. Uh, and then when you got ponies, you said, well, this guy's too cartoony. Uh, and I stayed in touch because I'm friends with Dave Wachter, who you work with. And I would always email you and go like, that new issue of that Wachter book looks great. And then uh, that's it. And then uh, I started doing covers, and that led quickly into issues, and that's it's been like my full-time job for the last three years. So that's what I do. You don't have to clap. Yeah. Keep Tell clapping, though. Just keep clapping. Um, I did not go to school for anything art-related or useful. Um, <laughs> I have a degree in journalism, um, which I actively do not use. Uh, <laughs> I got started, um, I uh, worked for the Jim Henson Company in Los Angeles, and um, when I left there, they knew I really liked to write, and they were trying to get Fraggle Rock comics off the ground, uh, so they were like, hey, you know who'd work for really cheap? <laughs> <laughs> Heather Neufer! Um, and I did that, and people actually really liked it, and it sort of spiraled into a lot more comic book work. Um, and I became a really big fan of uh, the show, of My Little Pony, and um, was like, this needs to be a comic book. Why isn't this a comic book? And I was at a party, and I heard these murmurs that IDW had the license, and so I started just asking people if they had any email addresses for people at IDW, and um, literally just started emailing Bobby like every couple weeks. <laughs> like, like, what's going on? I'd really like to pitch. Um, and eventually he let me, and that's how I ended up uh, doing ponies. So the key is harassing Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> that's the key, everybody. All right, so how did I get started? Uh, well, really comic books for my entire life. Um, my dad read them to me as bedtime stories. 
Uh, we didn't have Dr. Seuss in my house. We had like Ghost Rider and we had Dr. Strange. So my dad just screwed. Yeah. Yeah. My, my first word was ultimate nullifier. <laughs> I was in kindergarten. I couldn't tie my shoes. The teacher was worried, but I could explain the entire DC multiverse. So they were really worried. Um, but comics were like just, my dad read them to me. It was always like a dream of mine to do it, but I actually went into fashion design, the complete opposite of doing comics. Uh, so I just did that for a really long time, and, but always it was in the back of my head. I just, I gotta do comics. My dad always, he always wanted to. He didn't really get to do it. It was always a dream, and I was like, I'm gonna try it one day. So like, like Tony, I quit my job and decided I'm gonna be a comic book artist and not be able to pay rent. <laughs> So I did that for about 10 years, working it up, working it up, and I was trying to do Green Lantern and Batman and Superman. Clearly not my strong point. And it wasn't until like My Little Pony. And really how I got into that is I bought Bobby a Lamborghini. <laughs> um, are, are you enjoying the car? It's great. Good, good, okay. Don't mind that weird ticking sound in the back. <laughs> But that was really how, you know, I, I, you know, I heard about the comic, they were, IDW was doing it, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna try this one last time to work in comics, just one last time. And I sent some stuff in, and obviously it was IDW limited first, and I did some uh, original trading cards for the um, very first hardcover, was it Return of Crane, how do I say that word, Chrysalis? 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 Yes, I did those. And then two years later, I now get to do My Little Pony Friends Forever 16. With Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Yes. Yes. So That's I will. the only time anyone ever clapped for those two characters. <laughs> yes. But don't worry, I have plans to slowly, slowly ruin the fandom. <laughs> Perhaps they won't be the absolute worst Phillies anymore after you're done with them. <laughs> Though moving on. Um, the next question we'll just get out of the way is what is the character you most like writing or drawing so far in the comics you've worked on? Uh, I've only written Applejack stories so far. Uh, I, I have a natural affinity towards Applejack and her work <laughs> ethic and, and her strong family uh, bonds. Uh, although the character I, I kind of enjoy the most uh, watching and, and reading is Fluttershy. I think Fluttershy is pretty hilarious. <laughs> Well, just getting it out there, my least favorite <laughs> is, oh, oh, I like the characters. Rainbow Dash is actually my favorite character, but I hate coloring her so much, so much. <laughs> but um, my, my favorite character to work with, period, is Chrysalis, because I get to do all these cool like, lighting situations and dramatic, scary stuff. So that's always fun, getting to be evil and stuff, I guess. You do cool Nightmare Moon stuff too. Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. was that was yeah that yeah. issue we just did was awesome. Just yeah, it was. You guys don't know about that yet. Spoiler yeah. alert. It's on some secret stuff. <laughs> um, I like to draw the princesses a lot. I like to draw Princess, Princess Celestia probably the most. Uh, and she's great to draw commissions of because she's white, so it doesn't take that long to color. <laughs> she's actually light pink. I don't want to be. Uh, I called out on my color theory. Yeah, I was about to yell at you. Yeah. She was a very light pink. She's white in a pinch. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pearlescent. Um, definitely my favorite stripe for is rarity. Um, <laughs> um, if, if for nothing else, I find her very relatable. Oh, I like you. Um, which it, it's easy for me to write for her. I really like writing for Fluttershy, um, too, just because it's a challenge, because she doesn't talk. A whole lot, and when and when she does, it's it's very specific and and very through her own filter. So um, it's it's a lot to work with with Fluttershy, but also very fun. Okay, so this is basically to, to we're going to tell Bobby this right now. It's also drawing rarity. So Heather and I should get a rarity book. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I love rarity. Uh, yeah. So for me, it's drawing rarity mainly because Lauren Faust has a lot to answer for because I think she has cameras in my house and is basically patterned rarity after me. It's because I do actually have a fainting couch with me at all times. And I am high maintenance, and I may have packed nine different bags for this con. But yes, rarity, rarity for me definitely, oh, thank you, you gave me a rarity, thank you. Keeping it. Uh, so. That's, that's so rarity. What? 
she likes it down there. <laughs> oh, oh getting, getting PG-13 in here. Yes. Back it down, new guy. Go on. <laughs> okay, uh, well, the last uh, thing that we'll uh, actually ask to get out of the way before my cohort, Mr. Scheider, over there will start passing out the cards so y'all can start asking questions yourselves will be, uh, what comic shows or other media are you guys consuming at the moment that are influencing you, perhaps? Um, I like a lot of uh, cable, you know, drama television, like Justified and Better Call Saul. Um, I also like a lot of horror movies. Um, excited to see It Follows pretty soon. I, know, I don't know if there's a big horror crowd. Does that overlap much, pony horror? Anyway. Um, it Follows is great. Awesome? Okay, cool. I just saw Babadook recently, which I really liked. Um, I haven't seen the Babadook, but I love to say the Babadook. <laughs> Babadook, Duke, Duke. Duke. Um, I feel like I haven't really watched much lately. I mean, I've been like really into like Steven Universe, and um, yeah! uh, I'm really mad that Boom got it instead of IDW, so I could have gotten to work on it, but... Um, I feel like my life's been like consumed by video games lately, so I've been playing like tons of like Fire Emblem Awakening and yes. Smash Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Who's your wife? Oh, Lucina. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, comics. I like Saga a lot, obviously. Um, I'm behind on it, but I like Rachel Rising a lot. Um, TV shows. The only comic book TV show I watch right now is iZombie, which I think is great. Yes. Oh, yes. it's great. Uh, uh, so far, I mean, it's three episodes. They could really drop the ball at any <laughs> second now. <laughs> um, and Better Call Saul is really good right now. Um, that's it. I mean, look, yeah. who has time? <laughs> yeah. I have lots of time to watch TV. <laughs> it must be nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm like... Um, I kind of go the other way. I watch a lot of kids programming, um, especially from the 50s and 60s. Uh, but I really recently got super into Rebels. Anybody watching Star Wars Rebels? Star Trek. I want Chopper to be my pet. Star Trek is always good. Um, and comic book wise, gosh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the new Jeff Lemire Hawkeye. Should be pretty good. Um, all this sort of new Hawkeye stuff is great. Um, did, Heather, did you get the new Hawkeye figure that comes with Pizza Dog? No. There is a Hawkeye figure based on the new Hawkeye that comes with Pizza Dog. With Pizza and Dog! It's amazing. It's on Marvel's website. You should, you should buy it. Because I just bought it and it's like that <laughs> tall. And the dog is like that tall. And it's the best thing I own. Guys, I need that. Well, you should buy it. I'll like buy right it. now. Yay! Like pull it up on your phone and buy it. Okay, I'm going to look right now. Here, you tell them like this. <laughs> All right, well, apparently everyone here is Marvel for some reason. So, uh, DC girl here. So, um, but outside of uh, My Little Pony, obviously, I, I do a lot, I like a lot of fashion stuff. Um, I'm going to just say it here right now. I like keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> no one finds that funny. The okay. show or just as a pastime? Just, I, I hang out with the Lord Scott Disick a lot. So that's why I've decided to become the Baroness Von Blake. <laughs> um, outside of that, um, I love the Flash TV show. I think so far, I don't know what the movies are doing, but why don't we just hire Grant Gustin already? Um, outside, for comics, okay, obviously, very much DC. Even though, even though the new 52 might not have gone as well as we hoped. Um, otherwise, I read a lot of uh, different IDW books. Lilith's Pet Shop I like. Um, <laughs> This is just me. Say this is outside of My Little Pony, but the greatest book IDW has ever done, Lock and Key. Oh, for sure. Lock and Key is the greatest book ever. Did Gem come out yet? Gem did come out last week, oh, and that Gem's is gorgeous. Great. That yeah, is yeah. gorgeous work. I'm, I'm so glad Kimber likes girls. I'm gonna call her. <laughs> um, outside of that, um, I pretty much um, Heather and Sonia may have got me addicted to an anime and ruined my life. Ah, yes. Uh, Moda Kamatica Magica. <laughs> and now I've probably spent about a thousand dollars on figmas and statues and yeah. So yeah, sorry, sorry for ruining your life. You hey. did. You ruined it, but thankful. I it's thank a you. Good show. It is. Wise no, are expensive it. to it upkeep. Is. It's worth the pain. And 
let me just jump on the mic. I'm the other half of uh, Sandy's crew over here. I'll Ooh. be the one taking your questions over on the far side. If so, if you have any questions you would like to ask the comic team, feel free to make a line. Uh, first priority goes to little kids, and we've got a bunch of free swag over here for people who ask good questions. So uh, go ahead and start making a line if you want to uh, ask any of these fine people some questions about the comic industry. Yes, we have other TV shows you guys should be questions. watching. Flea Market Flip on Netflix. <laughs> uh, Tiny House Nation. Treehouse Masters. Treehouse Masters. I just stayed in Treehouse Point last week. It is so gangster. Gangster? Oh my God, it's amazing. I like to say that. <laughs> so good. I like that you said it. I want to do that. Oh, I would be afraid go. to hang on a treehouse. And it's near me. Oh, yeah. So what do they do these like? Is it sort of like it's like, like a bed and breakfast? Tank, they make a bunch of um, they just do treat mm. That kind of thing. I don't think you understand what happens on Shark Tank. Oh, come up. Uh, we don't bite. <laughs> what am I thinking about? Tank? What is like the, the show? Idea. What is the show that does? I think the idea they make a bunch of crazy shark tanks. Isn't that what they do? No, it's just yeah. these rich guys that invest in it's just small business businesses. Shark. I don't know. It's also don't watch it. Makes me stressed out. My girlfriend makes me watch ABC. Oh, you watch? We're just gonna go rebel over here. Did you watch Bunhead? Right. Come on. Bunheads is go, come and gone. All right, so, so we have our uh, first Bunheads. question, folks, oh. for this gentleman here. What was your name? Uh, Andrew. Hey, I just wanted to ask at IDW, how much uh, direct interaction is there between artist, writer, colorist teams? Like, are you guys still largely, do you guys work with the same people all the time? Like I noticed on the Pony books, it tends to be the same pairs of people. Is that normal? Do you, are you guys consistent about that? Um, you know, there's some there's some people that, that clearly really enjoy working together, like Katie and Andy. Um, other people, I mean, I know Tony, you've worked with pretty much everyone. Uh, Heather has worked with both Brenda and Amy. Obviously, uh, uh, Heather Breckel here colors everyone. Um, so if, if, if anyone has ever like, hey, I really want to work with this person, I'll try and make it happen if schedules allow. Um, but usually it just kind of comes down to who I think will be the best artist for the story, any given story, and I try and make that happen if schedule allows. Um, so there's no, there's no hard and fast answer, but um, just, just basically, you know, who, who kind of feels right, because I feel like I, I've, I'm pretty familiar with everyone who's been doing art, so, and I'm the first to read the script, so. Thanks, this is a quick segue if it's okay. Are you guys all located in the same office or it's... Uh... Everyone's all, all across the country. Okay. The IDW yeah. office is in San Diego, but everyone else is all around the country. Heather's in Ohio, Tony is in LA, uh, other Heather is, also, is now in Seattle. Jen, where do you live? I, I, um, I travel between Los Angeles and St. Louis because my girlfriend lives in St. Louis, so I okay. go back and forth so I can see her. Makes yeah. sense. Ben. Katie's in uh, Michigan, Andy's in, now in Atlanta, uh, Brenda's in Canada, so all over the place. Right, perfect. Thank you. Collaboration-wise, though, it's often, uh, it's sort of, the, it differs from project to project depending on how well... Uh, like if I already talk to somebody a lot, then it's much easier to just pick up and call somebody and talk to them. Like Heather Breckel, I talk to a lot when, when we're coloring because I've worked with her a lot and it's just about like, let's try this or let's try that or that looks awesome, do that. You know? I'm just like, whatever. Thank you very much. <laughs> Heather's like, I just want to play video games, stop talking to me. It's like I'm missing out on <laughs> sex that, time. Hey, that sounds good to me. All right, the next question, Jen, sir, what's your name? William? All right, William, what do you got to ask? If you have a chance, what kind of crossover you want to put in MLP? For example, the IDW Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters. I, I, uh, I, I know what I would like to do, Bobby. <laughs> I would love to do My Little Pony, Littlest Pet Shop. Yeah! I would like to do My Little Pony, 30 Days of Night. Oh. You can even work in Nightmare Moon with that. I think it would be fun to do an all Hasbro crossover. Just get Transformers, Pony, Gem, uh, yes. Lowe's Pet Shop, yes. uh, everyone, everyone involved and under one big licensor. That could be fun. Yes. Versus, versus, versus Sounds DC. Sounds like a giant version of the uh, Saturday morning cartoon heroes to the rescue yeah. at Hasbro. Yeah, I think what I would want to do is, um, well, Marvel did a big Attack on Titan crossover, so I want that for Pony. <laughs> oh, man. I've seen fan art like that. It's pretty gross. 
that everybody? Yeah, I think so. Did you ever get Oh, I don't have a favorite. All right, if, that's, if, if you don't have an answer, that's fine. Just say, I don't know. That, that's totally fine. Thank you. Yes, that is a very cute Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. Next question. Hello. 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 Uh, my question is, the, what is the hardest thing in the comic industry? Or like any, like, are there any like horror stories or whatnot have you? Or just like days where you're just like, Grr, I hate everything. Blah. Isn't it, I think that's the... Yes. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's the good answer. Yeah. Very politic answer. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for me, it'd be deadlines. Yeah. I get a week to color. Oh. <laughs> so 22 pages in a week. That's always fun. <laughs> More than deadlines, I think, is just scheduling. Because it really comes down to how much, like, knowing how much you can do and, and being able to plan around that. And nobody's good at that. So. Right. Yeah. I, I think it's mostly Bobby, the way he sends Hitman to your house when you miss a deadline. <laughs> I think that's it. He doesn't screw around. Oh man. Yeah, the fact that the fact that it doesn't stop, I think, is can be draining on everyone. Um, you know, it's a, it's a monthly gig. It, it just doesn't stop, uh, which is great. It means people want it, and it keeps being produced, and there's a demand for it. Um, all all comic books, all lic if all licensed comic books have sort of a, a a relationship beginning of relationship period. Whenever you start a new book, uh, where the licensor doesn't really trust you to get it right, and so they're usually uh, very attentive to you and giving you lots of notes. And hopefully, if you do your job well, then they kind of start to trust you. But uh, the beginning of any any book uh, is always a little tricky because there's always a lot of notes and. Um, you're, you're just beginning to figure out what works and what doesn't. Uh, I think we got pretty lucky with Pony that, uh, that we had uh, a couple really strong starting arcs, both uh, with uh, uh, Return of Chris Ellis and, uh, and the Nightmare Rarity arc. Um, so I, I feel really proud of that beginning, but uh, there, was, there was a lot of tension on it from Hasbro. Um, Hasbro's been great in general, but, uh, and they're like pretty hands off arcs. now. Um, but it's, it's always tricky at the start. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Next person in line, please. Hello. Hello. Um, I was wondering, uh, most of the processes in the comic book making are, seem pretty self-explanatory, but the one that was, to me, was somewhat nebulous is lettering. Is, what is involved with lettering? Is it something more than just a guy in Photoshop copying and pasting text <laughs> onto a speech bubble? Sir. <laughs> <laughs> it's Illustrator. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, yeah, there, I mean, I've lettered before, and uh, there is m way more to it than just sort of copy and pasting, although there is copying and pasting. Uh, the lettering, the thing about lettering is that if it's done right, you don't really notice it. So if you're reading a comic and you get to the end and you go like, well, that was well drawn and well written, and I have no thought on the lettering, then the letterer did his job right. Because the main job is to uh, lead the reader through the page. The artist should have already set it up for this, but a lot of times what a letterer has to do is come in and pull everybody's butts out of the fire and put the words in order and make your eye go from the top to the bottom in the correct order and catch everything that's on the page. So. It's a, it's a difficult job. IDW has in-house letterers. Our guy Neil does all the comics. I know you guys have all seen Neil's work. The guy's a talent. Uh, and uh, we, were, yeah, we were just talking about this. I think you made a great point. Uh, we were just talking about literally an hour ago at the bar before this. Uh, <laughs> being, being a letterer is a lot like being a sound mixer in a film. You are never going to notice it until it's done really badly, but it is really essential. Like in a film, if you can't hear the dialogue, you won't understand what's going on. A letterer, if you don't, can't read it, or it's confusing, or it's hard, yeah, it looks ugly, then you're gonna notice it. So it's a really thankless task, so next comic you read, take a look at who did the lettering and mentally send them good vibes, because it's a thankless <laughs> task. There you go. Hello, like come on up. Yeah. So I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. Jen, yeah. Madoka talk. Yeah. Or let's see, what's, your, what's your opinions about the show? Um, what my opinions on the show is I, I've never watched an anime that made me cry uh, mainly because I wasn't like expecting because I you know you turn it on you think oh it's going to be like Sailor Moon all cute magical girl <laughs> and then by the end 
I, my life has been destroyed. <laughs> and then I'm just crying. But definitely Kyoko is probably the best. I love her. She's my favorite. Um, I, I can't get enough of it, obviously, because some people make me just want to buy all the toys and all the figures and all the statues. So, you know, if, if they just... I, ho I hope there's more. I ho are they doing a second season, Sonia, you said? There, there actually is. Are they? Um, after Rebellion, they, they set up, like, the way they set up Rebellion... We're sorry, Tony. Was, um, <laughs> We're sorry. Well, they, they set up Rebellion to be able to be a sequel by it with the... With the developments with Hamura. Yeah, I'm so, going to buy so much more stuff. So they're going to be milking that cash oh, cow for a while. Please. I don't, I don't know if they're doing another season, but I've definitely heard about another movie. Did you guys hear about these My Little Pony comics <laughs> at all? <laughs> well, I, I happen to think that there's this uh, one artist, uh, Jen Blake, who did a really good looking My there Little Pony uh, Madoka cover. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I might have done something. Maybe. <laughs> Yes, I might have done that. Good. Thank you. Uh, next question, please. Hey, so I was curious if you maybe have any sort of stories of frustration or horror stories of sending your final product in or what you thought was a final product into your superiors and they sent it back like, no, nah, no, nah, dude, you can't do that. That's, that's too violent, that's too vulgar, that's not cute enough, whatever the case may be. We just did the uh, the Fiendship is Magic miniseries, and I sent in a couple pages that I was sure was just going to be like, absolutely not, and they were just fine with them. So the, this is a, <laughs> it's a very violent... Next week, if you guys check out Tyrick, there's some real violence going on in that thing. So... Bring your kids. <laughs> That's like, I can't believe we got away with what we did on Sombra. It's like oh, the yeah. ending of that. I was like, whoa. And that's, that's, that's the, the one that's intense. just coming out, right? Came out yeah. Yeah. Last week. Oh, well, I guess I need to go to my comic chef when I get back then. Yes. Um, there's, been a, there's been a couple uh, storylines that are particularly kind of origin-esque storylines that Hasbro have kind of wanted to keep to themselves. I know we've wanted to do a sort of Discord origin and a Zakora origin. And uh, which have been really fun stories, uh, but we pitched them, and, and Hasbro was like, "Look, we kind of have plans for this. Sorry, and I don't know what those plans are, so sorry, I can't <laughs> tell you." Um, but uh, but there's been a couple of things that the, that the show, rightfully, I mean, the show comes first, so uh, that they've wanted to kind of uh, save and save for for later on down the lo uh, line. But in terms of uh, it's very rare. There's been a couple instances where they've asked us to tone some things down, or or change things to fit in what they want to do. But Hasbro is really, is really supportive in what we're doing and, uh, and are compared to a lot of other licensors I work with are very hands off. So there aren't too many horror stories or anything like that. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Fantastic. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> Hi there, um, I'm an educator. Um, I actually teach eighth graders in Oakland and um, they get like, yeah, so they get like about 15 minutes of where they could read whatever they want and like over, I would say two thirds of them have at least one My Little Pony comic out reading it. And sometimes the principal walks by and he's like, what are they reading? Is that literature? And I'm like, of course it's literature. Um, so uh, my question is, because I'm an English teacher and I love comics. What, as people who are involved in the comics industry, in what ways can we integrate comics, graphic novels, like all these kinds of really great visual narratives that teachers kind of are like, oh, it's comics, it's kid for kids, like it's not educational. What, but I, I differ. In what ways can we integrate more comics into kind of the everyday school day, like as things that we as educators can teach Students. Wow. That's a hard Sorry. question. <laughs> it is. Um, I know that there's a, there's, there's a, what's it called? How Tunes? How Comics? Mm -hmm. How Tunes? Uh, yeah, Nick Dragota. Yeah, with, uh, with, uh, that comes out from Image, and that has a lot of, uh, they're sort of educational comics, and I know uh, we were just talking about Chris Eliopoulos uh, draws. Uh, uh, kind of auto, uh, biographical comics called like uh, I Am Amelia Earhart and oh, some other great. ones. Um, so there are some directly educational comics out there um, that, that are great learning tools. Um, 
And in terms of, uh, you know, a lot of comics are just great literature. I think uh, a lot of uh, eighth graders would love something like uh, like Blankets, which is a coming of age uh, story. Yeah, um, that, so. uh, I'm blanking. I mean, there's tons of great. Uh, uh, sure. Uh, uh, Bone, uh, This One Summer. Um, there's tons of great coming of age novels that I think that just, if someone doesn't read a lot, I think comics are a great uh, learning tool because let's face it, they are easier to read. It's, it's intimidating to get War and Peace and 400 pages of just straight prose. But something, I mean, that you can give them comics and it's still great literature. Um, so I think it's a great, uh, a great learning tool in that way. And it's really just people like you exposing kids to it. Um, so I, I wish there was a great, uh, better answer. Um, but I, yeah, we're, I know libraries are a great tool, and uh, that's been in the past ten years. Li librarians have really been uh, making inroads into supplying graphic novels to uh, schools. So um, I guess talk to your to your librarian, or just keep doing what you're doing. Because bravo, that's awesome. Yeah, um, I teach in Oakland, and our school doesn't have a library. <laughs> Yeah, I buy most of the comics, so. Let's make that happen. Yeah, that, that's what I'm thinking, fundraiser, yeah. Good luck with that, that's a great idea. All right, gentlemen, come on up. All right. you worked on. Everybody, I'm all peak, Mike, I just worked on. Everybody, one now. Want me to help you out here? Yes. Uh, what is your favorite MLP comic that you have worked on? Hmm. That's my question now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys, let's start at that end. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> okay. Friends Forever number 16. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's hard. Um, I really liked, well, I really liked something we just worked on recently. Oh. <laughs> um, but things that have already come out, I definitely really loved the bookworm arc we did, um, just because I got to write a lot of different styles in it. Um, got to do like romance and adventure comics, which was pretty fun. Um, yeah, I'd say I'd say for now that's a great. Idea. As far as uh, comics that are out, I'm definitely proudest of uh, Friends Forever number nine, which is uh, Granny and the Flim Flam Brothers. There's a, I think that's uh, my best issue for sure. And uh, but then the Fiendship stuff, there's some really cool like new stuff coming out that you guys haven't. Stuff that looks way different than stuff I've ever done before, and then way different than anything else, and then uh, and then the Nightmare Moon book that me and Heather just did, and Heather. <laughs> All the Heathers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's got some excellent uh, Nightmare Moon Celestia violence in there. So. Yeah, it's like for me, it's always changing because I am on. I've been on like forty something issues at this point, but. Um, I mean, I feel like the one that's like most near and dear to my heart was probably um, issue three, just because I felt like that was like the first time I really got to, you know, go out and do whatever. But um, most recently, I was really proud of how the Tyrick issue came out because I did something really different on that, and it was a ton of fun. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, it's, these are all my babies. So, and especially since I've got a lot of my creators right here, I'm like, uh, I don't want to. Um, but uh, something that I think is easy just to say because it's a done in one issue that I really got a kick out of. And just every page that came in, I got a huge chuckle out of, which says, um, I guess it was number 21, the, the pets issue, where it's the single standalone with uh, the, pet, the, the pet team up to save Ponyville. I, I really got a chuckle out of that and, uh, and all of Amy's work on that. And it was a really funny script from Jeremy. So that's kind of, if, if someone is not familiar with Pony, that's what I give them because I feel like it's pretty accessible and everyone understands how their own pet is weird. Um, even though it's not very indicative of what Pony is about, but I think it's a good gateway drug uh, into Pony, so. <laughs> Thank you very much. Aw, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, your turn. All right. Jack Kirby or Stan Lee? Oh! Oh, oh my. Oh. Kirby. Kirby. Yeah, definitely Kirby. Yeah, Kirby. Yeah. Wait, as an actor? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kirby. Yeah, it's Kirby. I mean, I think everyone who, anyone who actually works in comics understands that Kirby yeah. is the master. He's the king. So it's, it's but hey, it's Stanley, even if he did nothing, and he definitely did more than nothing, he's still been comics' number one 
uh, you know, spokesperson. So hats he's off like to the, both of them. He's like the flavor of flavor of comics for yeah. like a hundred years. <laughs> All right, well, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, next person in line, please. Hi. Uh, my question is for Bobby. And other than horror movies, do you ever, ever watch any horror TV? <gasps> um, I guess, well, uh, I watch Hannibal. That's kind of a horror yeah. show, right? I mean, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess not. I'm trying to think of what, I mean, like, I watch Buffy, but I don't know if that counts. I mean, it's got sort of, um, all right. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I couldn't really get into Dexter. Um, How about American Horror Story? Do American Horror Story, definitely. No, I, I, haven't, I haven't watched American Horror Story. Um, so I guess not that much, no. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right, well, I just want to say we do have uh, about another 20 minutes of uh, this <laughs> panel, so if there's more people that want to ask questions, we are, uh, there's still room. We can and ask we can... you guys questions, too. Actually, that could happen, too. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. We got some people. Oh, no, don't let Sony ask questions. Oh, I really smell. like the shirt Sorry, of the guy Sorry, I, I might have stepped in it then, guys. <laughs> All right, well, we get the next question. Here you go, sir. Hello. Hi. So, a few of you mentioned, like, quitting your jobs and completely transitioning over Do to not. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's well, okay. From the standpoint of going into a field just suddenly and like getting in the door, some, one of you mentioned an internship. Could you give like any details about like how you find things like that, how you find internships, how you get into a field when you may not have been expecting to do that your whole life? Uh, well, I brought up the internship. Um, I started, uh, I, I got into comics by a, a guy named Andy Schmidt has online courses called Comics Experience. Uh, and I, uh, he was an editor at Marvel at the time and I lived in New York. And I took a couple of his classes when they were real in life classes uh, and kind of got to know him. Uh, and then when he went, to, he went to work at IEW and when I wanted to start working comics, I said, hey, are there any opportunities? And he said, why don't you try out for an internship? And I did. Um, and by the way, this was when I was like 27, so I thought I was way too old for an internship. Um, I flew across country, took a one credit class at a community college to get the internship. Um, so it was a lot of like, it was a lot of uprooting and, and working to, to do that. Um, other, I mean, so I kind of had in that I knew someone other for other places. Um, it's, there's usually an application process, and I guess you just have to nail that application process. But um, what, what helps is if you just are very well versed in comics. Uh, it helps if you, uh, I know a lot of people get in through comics journalism, because uh, they interview creators or editors, and it's just sort of developing relationships uh, and, and knowing that you know the good stuff, and then a healthy dose of luck, too. Yeah, I would definitely agree on like internship stuff and uprooting, unfortunately, is usually necessary. Um, when I got in at Henson, I started as an intern, um, an unpaid internship that was completely not in my um, area of knowledgefulness. And uh, <laughs> so it's a new word. I, that's what I do. Um, and so it's really about kind of forcing yourself to do things that are, might be uncomfortable, especially if it's not in your wheelhouse. Um, and uh, just producing a lot of work, I think, really helps. Um, and taking every chance you can to meet people uh, really helps. So it's finding the internships. Usually you have to be in school, like, you know, like Bobby took the one credit class. Um, I was lucky enough to do it while I was still in school. <laughs> um, but it is kind of about, it's not usually easy. But if you want to do it badly enough, you kind of... And a lot of it is homework, too. Like, yeah. if, if you're on the hustle during the day and sort of and interning and schmoozing and doing all that, during the night you need to be honing your skills so that when somebody says go, you're ready to go right away. Right. You know? Or at least go and fake it long enough until you make it. Yeah. Do something. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hustle, money, and respect. I mean, actually, the, the last thing you just said, do something, that's huge. Like, yeah. you don't need to wait for anyone to give you, get you in the industry. Just start making your own comics. The mo vast majority of them are going to be terrible. You're going to fail over and over again. But you know what? You're going to learn. You're going to get better. So if you want to get into comics, which we can debate whether that's something that's a smart thing to do, but <laughs> uh, the thing to do is just to make comics. Don't wait for anyone to tell you to do it. Just start, it, start doing it. And, find a friend to draw it. It doesn't have to be good, just do it. 
create. That's like, like, look at, wasn't it like the, the new artist on the, the latest Batgirl? Weren't they found through Tumblr? Yeah. Like, I could have swore that's yeah. how they got their start. I think it's Tumblr, yeah. So, I mean, you know, like Bobby said, just do stuff and they'll, maybe they'll find you. Yeah. yeah. All right, this is a pretty general question. It's just out of curiosity, but do you have what you consider to be a greatest turning point in your life, like getting accepted to a university or maybe getting some inspiration from an idol? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess, uh, I, I mean, me, I talked about coming out to California where I didn't, where I didn't know anyone, and it was for an unpaid internship, and I felt like I was too old to be doing it. Um, but I knew I wanted to do it, so I, I, that's something I'm proud of that I did. Um, it's one of those moments, you know, you kind of have those kind of choices in, in, in life where it's like, all right, do you, do you want to do something or you just want to kind of coast? And um, it, it's hard to do, and uh, you know, it, it's not even necessarily the right decision all the time, but you, I think you have to at least try for it. Um, but uh, me, me was, uh, was uprooting and coming out to California. I went to work at a, at a studio with a couple of other artists, I would I just was working enough to sort of scrape by, and and a friend of mine said, "Come over and work with me at the studio." So I came, and there was a desk there for me. I started working, and working in there, I saw uh, what like insane diligence can do. And really, all it was doing was just making it so that the guy would not ever be broke. Not ever, ever. Not like he he could live the rest of his life and coast, but just that like. He would never worry when rent came around or, you know, and I watched this friend of mine work very hard every day and I was just like, well, geez, I should just work very hard every day. Uh, <laughs> like, he didn't take off weekends, he didn't, uh, you know, he wouldn't go home on holidays sometimes, he would just sit there and work and work and work and work. And I did that for several years and now I'm starting to sort of back away from it, but in those several years I sort of leveled up a lot and got the idea of a work ethic in my head that uh, is not a real healthy one, but is one that sort of is what it takes to get the job done. So, the, just sort of going to work in an environment that's the right environment. I have a slightly different point of no return. Um, imagine 19 year old Heather Neufer. Um, I was working, I, I really wanted to be a lawyer back then, and um, I don't know why. <laughs> um, and I got, actually got an inter a really prestigious, prestigious? internship um, with uh, the U.S. Senate. And my job was to write speeches and quotes for U.S. Senators at 19. Um, <laughs> and uh, I remember I had like a really crappy, like, like it was like a... <sighs> It was like a jacket, but it was like made of polyester. And then I like bought like these horrible pants, like Ross, that would like kind of matched. But it was all this horrible polyester garb. And I was, and I went for my first day of work, and uh, I was like really excited. I'm like, I'm gonna be in these offices. It's gonna be awesome. I'm gonna be so cool. I'd straighten my hair. It was great. And um, they took me down to a basement. And, and that was where I was supposed to work. And there was another woman down there who is like, literally like an old version of me. <laughs> and in my memory, she had like cobwebs on her. <laughs> um, and pretty much the incident I sat down at my little cubicle in my horrible, sweaty, awful thing, I was like, this is so bad. This is so wrong. And, uh, and I was like, I gotta get out of here. Um, and I did that for about a year and a half. And I uh, saved up enough money to get the heck out of um, the Senate <laughs> and went away. But still to this day, you can find quotes that I wrote for like 85-year-old Republicans when I was 19. <laughs> and, and it's pretty great. <laughs> you got to get in line. <laughs> Our origin stories? <laughs> <laughs> we just don't find ourselves that interesting. Has yeah. I, not let me do my weird. origin story. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. I used to do autobiographical comics, and I, I plan to do more in the future, but A, my life is very boring when I just draw all the time, and B, I just draw all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you. If you want a tattoo, you can have a tattoo. I see you staring at it. You can have it. It's what's for... 
What? Okay, we get it. I get it. There. There, yeah. You got Kitty Mark now. You're grown up. Yes, sir. Um, I'm actually asking a question for a friend of mine. He's back there in the wheelchair. Um, your guys' aisle is not exactly accessible. Anyways. Oh, that's all good. You uh, he's actually, he's quite, I, um, I, where I work, we have a graphics guy. He does all of our graphics and whatnot. And occasionally he'll sit there and play on the internet. And I asked him, why are you sitting there just playing on the internet? He's like, I'm trying to get inspired. So I, was, I guess this is his question was, this, what do you guys do to get inspired before you, you know, start a comic or what you're about to draw, you know? Yeah. 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 That, yeah, playing around on the internet does it a lot of the time. It sort of depends on what, uh, what I have to draw. So like, Recently, I did a cover uh, for an upcoming issue that's like a, sort of like an old horror movie poster from the 30s. And so I knew I wanted to do something like that, so I just sat around. I have a big book of horror movie posters, and I just flipped through it and flipped through it and sort of tried to fill myself up with that and then spit it right back out You know, when I went to do the piece. Uh, I, it's sort of a, like, for me, I'm a, uh, like a massive consumer. And so I have like... Even after DVDs are dead, they've been dead for like two years, I can't stop buying DVDs yeah. and <laughs> books and comics. I have just like a, a library uh, from hell. And, <laughs> but it, what it's good for is when this sort of thing comes up where it's like, well, I gotta do an issue that's about like, uh, what if they worked in an auto factory? And I'm like, well, I, first of all, I gotta get gung-ho out. I got that on the shelf, so I can just get that going right away. Not necessarily that, but like, you know, I have a, a sort of something to put me in a, in a mindset at any point. On the other hand, that can often just be BS. Like, yeah, you just have to just get up and go to work. Uh, and so if you find yourself with an extra 15, 20 minutes and you want to sit there and get inspired, do that. But sometimes you just really just have to go to work. Mm -hmm. This graphics guy here sounds like he's really wasting time on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's, he's the only one, so he's kind of he's gonna hurt. Anyways. All right, thank you. Do you want a sticker? You can have a sticker. sticker. Hey, there's a vinyl scratch one right there. Right there. Go. Yes. Yes, we have 10 minutes, so we're going to have to rush these questions. Yes. Oh, you're on staff. What are you doing? Get to work. Uh, so. Oh, yeah. Um, this is a question primarily for the writers. What is the character you find most difficult to write for, and why? <laughs> okay, I can start. Um, I find it really difficult to write for Rainbow Dash. Um, what? I love her immensely, um, but like putting her in and making her not seem too bossy and like just making her seem like herself can be really limiting, especially with you know panels and how much space we physically have in the comics. I find it really hard to, to make her come off like super true to her character. Um, and that's what I wanna do. So I, I find her the, probably the most difficult to write for. Uh, I've, I've written very few characters, actually, of, when you consider the entire show, just uh, Applejack or family, and then uh, Mayor Mayor and other characters I created. Um, but I would say a lot of uh, character uh, writers have trouble with Rainbow Dash. I think for that exact reason is a lot of Rainbow Dash is in that voice acting. Uh, and there's a certain bravado, but you, you, it's so easy to make Rainbow Dash a jerk, but but it's, it's, the, it's the performance that really sells it. Um, and an artist can... can communicate a lot of that, but um, it, it's, it, it's really easy to make Rainbow Dash just sound like a big jerk in the comic, and I think everyone's kind of struggled with that, and it's something moving forward. I, I, I feel like we, we have a Rainbow Dash story that we can really add something to our character, and we haven't done it yet, um, but that's something I've been thinking about editorially, so. Um. It's a fire issue, definitely. Yeah, no, I mean, we've, we've tried, and, and there's going to be more. There's a... There's a uh, Rainbow Dash uh, Fluttershy uh, Friends Forever coming out where uh, <laughs> where they uh, they go to the Cloudsdale uh, school uh, flight camp uh, flight school reunion and so Rainbow Dash is all about it Fluttershy not so much so I think we do some good work with both of them in that issue so that's an exclusive hasn't been announced yet there you go all right we're getting some hot scoops up in here yes 
Oh, we have 25 minutes. They gave us an hour and a half for this? Oh, well. Oof. We just have a wealth of time. You might just get to ask, ask us some questions then, huh? Okay. How much time do we have, please? 7.45? Okay. Well, 20, 25... You know what? Ask your question, please. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Let's debate it for the next 25 minutes. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the next person to ask the panel after this. So, as far as the artwork goes, how do you get into, like, specializing in your field? How do you become, like, a colorist or, or a line artist? Is it, do you go in saying, like, I really like line work, I want to do line work, or is it something that happens more gradually? Well, for me, I mean, I'm, I went to school like to draw, and I can actually, I write my own comics, I draw my own comics, I color them. And pretty much I decided to be color, a colorist because I found that that was the, it's like inking and coloring are my favorite steps in art. I hate penciling a lot. So I was kind of like, well, this is the thing I'm really the best at, so I decided to pursue that. So I think, fine. I, I feel like it's really rare for someone to be a jack of all trades in the industry just because deadlines are so crazy. So yeah. figure out what you enjoy the most and what you're best at and what you're fastest at. That's, that's a really big one. People like fast artists. So um, yeah, for me, it was definitely just a matter of this, I really, really like coloring. So that's what I wanted to do. Even though it's like, I mean, there's drawbacks like, it's not as exciting, but you know, I, I love what I do, so I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah, generally to like sort of when you're getting into comics, you uh, will end up doing a little bit of everything. Like I can draw, I can color, I can letter, I can ink, I can write. Like I can write a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then basically it is, it just comes down to like what you can do uh, best and fastest and without ruining, you know, like, just what you can handle and, and sort of uh, what makes the most sense for you. Like, Heather can do four pages a day in colors, which means she has the potential to earn more in a day than I can earn in a, in a like, a normal day for you is four pages, right? Yeah, I think the most I've ever done in a day was 12 pages, and that was oh horrible. <laughs> yeah, but, like, at the end of the day, oh, like, yeah. that's a great day. Oh yeah, that's that's like a lot. Of <laughs> anyway. But so it's it's just about uh, you know like figuring out what you're like what you can what you're best served doing, you know, and you'll sort of figure it out, you know. And if you're realistic and you look at what you you know what you're doing, then you'll go like, this is probably the way I should lean. I should lean into this. Thank you for your question. Next, come on up. Yeah, I wanted to know if you'd heard of either Escher Girls or the Hawkeye Initiative. <laughs> what? Yeah, I've definitely heard of the Hawkeye Initiative. <laughs> the Escher Girls is the thing on Tumblr where they oh, redline yeah, everyone. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. If. But, uh, yes, more. Yes. Tell me more. <laughs> oh. Well, Escher Girls is where uh, female characters in comics are often drawn in impossible poses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And Hawkeye Initiative is where <laughs> someone draws Hawkeye in the same poses and outfits. Are we yeah, for it? Where do, where do we stand on it? <laughs> it's sexy How Hawkeye. Do we feel? Uh, just some general opinions on it. I, as a comic book artist, I find it infuriating. Uh, like, the characters are flying, they're, they have superpowers. I understand that it's kind of a, a, a bit of BS to show the butt and the boobs at the same time. <laughs> Uh, but it's also a bit of BS to, for somebody whose name I don't know, to just draw, take a red crayon out and draw over top of somebody who, like, breaks their back working in comics all day long, you know? Or is dead, which often happens. <laughs> I think there's a fine line. I think what Tony is saying is, is, is accurate to a degree, is that there's, there's a lot of reasons why these things are drawn as they're drawn that people aren't aware of. But I think the, what these initiatives also bring a lot of awareness to that. In a lot of ways, the comic book industry, historically, is pretty sexist and is pretty much geared just towards men. And it can be more inclusive than that. Um, and so I think it does a good job of, of highlighting uh, how silly uh, some of these poses are and how they're just 
basically made just for men. Um, but they can, I think what Tony's saying is it can go over, overboard too. So I think I, my personal opinion is that it's, it's good to, it brings good awareness, but I don't know, it's a little nitpicky at the same time. Okay. What Bobby says is the political answer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. That was the next question. Have a sticker. <laughs> They're tattoos as well. Have a thing. Have a thing. I don't have any gold stars, but I give you one. Praise the sun. Um, let's see. Did you have any childhood habits you did that helped you with your career? Um, I definitely did. I wrote a lot of fan fiction when I was a kid. <laughs> Name a bad 80s or 90s movie, I probably wrote a sequel to it. Like... <laughs> oh, definitely. Yes. Like, right. like I, anything, especially anything John Hughes related or um, multiple Lost Boys sequels, which were probably better than the actual sequels, guys. How dare uh, you? Uh, yeah, so my big, it was like my guilty secret pleasure that I wrote all of these, these sequels to movies when I was a kid. And I think it's definitely helped now because I still absorb media like it's candy. Oh man, like I have, one of my first comics I ever read was the Sonic the Hedgehog comic, so <laughs> I, I have like 500 pages of Sonic fan comics that I drew as a kid, and I still have them and they're terrible, and I'm so glad I never put them online. It's like I saw the, um, the no, <laughs> I saw the, um, Recently on Tumblr, it's been floating around that Rebecca Sugar, who does um, Steven Universe, and she also worked on Adventure Time, um, all her Invader Sim, like, Zim fan art and fan fiction has surfaced on Tumblr, and I'm like, oh god, I'm so glad I didn't put any of that online. <laughs> I, I don't know, for me, it's always been Captain Carrot and the Amazing Zoo Crew. Yeah, nobody knows what that is, and it's okay. Scott Shaw in the house. Thank you, here. okay, yeah, that... There you, that for me, anytime I need like to just have some good inspiration, I just grab my Captain Carrot books and I just go to town. Wow. That's just... Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is uh, the illustrious uh -oh. Sonia, uh -oh. our, uh -oh. our dear leader. Uh-oh. Here comes Troy. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> yes, Apple Cider did take the uh, the opportunity to different uh, write a different message on my card than I was thinking. Of. Um, it's a literary masterpiece. Uh, it says poop, 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 poop. So no. It's valid. Not in two days. We're all, we're all pro pooping here in the comics. Yes. Yes. Everybody does it. Everybody poops. But my question was, um, you know, in, in, the, in the world of TV, they talk about, you know, you're, you're in the writer's room and, they, and you, you know, they, they talk about breaking a story. And I'm just wondering how that process goes in the comics. I mean, first off, is everyone involved, the editor, the writers, the artists and whatnot. And then how, you know, how do particular arcs find their way into the actual books? A lot of tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, know, I know some people, uh, before it comes to me, I will hear a lot of times a writer will talk to an artist. I know Katie and Andy do that a lot. Um, I feel like people have talked to you, Tony, about story. Christina's talked to you about stories before it comes to me. Um, so a lot of times there'll be sort of a back and forth between a, a writer and uh, an artist. Uh, but ultimately, a, a writer will uh, pitch me. Uh, for instance, Heather will pitch me uh, usually a, a few ideas at a time. And I'll either say, ah, we've already got a storyline like that coming up, or oh, Hasbro won't let, has something like that coming up. Or sometimes it's just like, eh, you know, I'm not really feeling that story for whatever reason. And sometimes I'll say, but what if, what if we looked at it a little bit differently, or I'll ask some questions like, what are you trying to get out with the story? And then a lot, of, most of what you see on the page is just stuff that really, really works. That it's clear that the writer is really excited about it. Um, it's very palpable on the page. Um, and uh, then we'll send it to Hasbro. Um, once, so once I'm good, we'll kind of you know, go back and forth a little bit, me and the writer. Um, 
So, th so there's no artist involvement at all with that? Um, no, usually not, uh, unless, some, unless they've talked about it beforehand. Um, but usually, uh, then we'll get to Hasbro, and if Hasbro approves the idea, I'll talk to an artist about it. And then sometimes at that stage, the artist, uh, while it's still in proposal stage, the artist, uh, sometimes we go straight to script, but sometimes the artist will talk to the writer and kind of bring their input and think about, say, what might work really well visually. Um, uh, if I can, so, yeah. yeah. If I can get to a writer before the script is done, I feel like I I can uh, like get some things in, not writer wise, but just like here's how many panels I feel like I can do the best work with, or every once in a while give me a splash page, stuff like that. Which is when I used to listen to artists give interviews and talks, I was just like, what a bunch of babies. But it really is. <laughs> you know, like if you get a script and it's five panels, five panels, five panels, five panels, five panels, eventually you just, like if one says three, you're just like, I can really draw on that page, you know? And so um, that's like, if I hear I'm gonna be working with somebody, I'll shoot them an email or give them a call ahead of time and just say like, here's what will really result in the best looking issue. All right, or, I'm, I'm gonna be a, oh, oh sorry. Or uh, like if I know, with the characters or the scenarios and stuff like that, there's a couple uh, things that we're working on right now where I just go to the writer and say, like, this is kind of a cool idea I had. And they'll be like, that's amazing, or that's really dumb. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm going to be a terrible person and ask one more question, but it's a, it's a quickie one. Um, if you could uh, write or, or do art for any character or book that you obviously are not doing now, which would it be? Uh, my favorite comic book of all time is Yusaki Yojimbo. Uh, I, edit the, I, I edit the Ninja Turtle comics, and obviously there's some history between Yusagi and, and, and the Turtles, and I've been trying for the past three years to make a crossover happen. Maybe it will, but I, don't, I can't give a definitive answer, but that's, what, <laughs> that's my editorial dream project. <laughs> I think for me, um, probably Miss Marvel. It's, it's a masterpiece, and it's gorgeously done, and I would feel terrible taking work away from the amazing colorist on there, but I would still love to do an issue. Uh, my honest answer is Saga, because I would just do like a few issues and then just take a year off. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I guess like if I wanted to do something, I, I really just want to do my own stuff. You know, like I want to come up with, create my own content, write my own stuff, draw my own stuff. So you're your own dream project? That's, <laughs> I'm my own dream boat. Tony um, ships himself. <laughs> <laughs> I actually just got to do a dream project. I got to do some Wonder Woman, um, which is pretty great. Uh, in licensed, other assorted licensed comics, I'd really love if they did like a labyrinth, a new labyrinth comic, um, or I'd really love to do some Hellboy. I love Hellboy so much that it hurts. <laughs> um, I guess um, outside of, let's say, an IDW or My Little Pony, I would love to do Green Lantern. Love to do something there. Um, definitely, like she got to do, The Dream. I would love to do something with Wonder Woman someday. Um, and then, I, you know what, I think I'd love to try, if I could, like some maybe Equestria Girls. That'd be fun to do. I would love to do that. Yeah. Back right off, kid. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. What I meant to say was Ninja Turtles, Godzilla. So all the what things I've <laughs> worked on. Gem. 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 Oh, yes. yeah. Better watch out. He's coming for your job. <laughs> all right, we got two more questions, and then we're running out of time. I know. Sorry. It's all right. Twitter is very interesting. No, it's just texting. It's all good. All right, so uh, the entire higher ups of IDW were just like, screw this, we quit our jobs, you guys are in charge. What is the first ideas you would like to make on your own without restriction? So in this scenario, I have died. Let's just be clear about this. Goodbye. What do you do? Goodbye. I'll just finish Game of Thrones <laughs> with Tony. <laughs> Are we All in charge right. of page rates now, or like yes. what? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, a lot of things, whatever, man. Well, this is terrifying because I, I know that I know that my stories would be really convoluted and probably about 85 pages a piece <laughs> if if Bobby wasn't around. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah structure is sort of really helpful, especially in this sort of work. Yeah. 
when you're too, so close to your work, it's really almost impossible to tell what's really good. And you can be like, oh, this is really awesome. I love this. And then it's like, eh. Plus, I just think of like how dark it would be to try and draw ponies in this world where all these people I know died. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm trying to run around and make rules. We're not good with that. What's your, what's your dream story? Like, if you can do anything in Pony World, what would it be? Ship everything. Everything. <laughs> Twilight Sparkle and Napkin. I OTP. Napkin? I think, I think I've said it at every con I've been to. I just want a... I want a gummy story, and I just want it to be gummy, and I want it to be wordless, and I think about it all the time. Well, it happen. <laughs> okay. I, I said that pets issue was one of my favorites, so I, I'm yeah. clearly susceptible to that. So. <laughs> I, I think I'd like us just to admit, admit once and for all that Angel is the most evil thing in all of Equestria. Yeah! That's, that's what I want. That's what I want. It'll be the new villain. A- Age of Angel would be kind of cool. Yes. Like, what if Angel was the, what became like the new Princess Celestia? That'd be kind of yes. cool, right? I like uh, Alcorn, Alcorn Angel. That'd be awesome. Let's do that. Oh, yes. I'm just start writing the fan fiction right now. Sounds like a metal band. I really like uh, drawing the guards, and I would. I think it would be fun to do like a shining armor slash not slash. P.S. Oh, oh, like a, oh. like a, a, sli- a Shining Armor Flash Century story would be fun to do, I think. Just because I think that'll be, I think those two would be cool together. I and, look forward to reading the IDW forums. After that. <laughs> <laughs> reading my death threats. Thank you. Cool. All right, well, this is our very last question. You are the lucky winner, sir. Woo. Come on up and claim your prize in the final question of the IDW My Little Pony panel. Yay. Oh, oh, Cider has a question, so he's the runner-up. <laughs> Thanks, Apple. Um, for those of you that have self-published, you know, drawing, writing, your, coloring yourself, what are the pros and cons that you have gotten out of that? No, Heather and Tony. Well, I mean, have money that you can, you can afford to lose, because it's, it's not like a cash-making proposition. So if you have a job and you are interested in self-publishing, every paycheck set aside like $100 or however much you can afford to set aside. And then just think to yourself, I'll never ever see that again. But it's for a good reason or it's for a reason at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's, but really that's the only con. Like the pro is that you're making something and you're learning something and you're getting better at doing something that you already you know, have an impulse to do in the first place. That's it. That's all I got. You should do it. Okay. <laughs> and don't uh, also try to steer clear of uh, uh, print-on-demand services because it's just a nightmare. It's a holy <laughs> nightmare. Save up enough money that you can do a run. First of all, say a run of a uh, thousand books costs six hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. Save up a thousand dollars and be ready to spend that money because then you're not going to print a bunch of nonsense. You know, you're going to make sure that you're, the work you're doing is at least a thousand dollars worth. You know, I think I think the the it's one in the same is that uh, you'll learn how difficult making comics is, and that can be really really discouraging. But it's something everyone who's in comics learns at one point or another. Um, it's it's really draining. It's it's really it's hard to keep doing it, uh, but if you truly love it, then you will do it. So it's important to, you'll, you'll, you'll kind of weed yourself out of the process. Um, that's why you should do it, because if you're not meant to be doing it, you will discourage yourself and you'll stop. If you're meant to be doing it, you'll just keep on trucking because you love it. Thank you. And a favorite gem for those who uh, have one from Steven Universe. Oh. <laughs> it's like, a gem is truly outrageous. <laughs> Or not. I love them all. Like, um, yeah, I do. I, Square Mom has stolen my heart after the season finale. I was like, oh my god, so many feels. But yeah, they're all amazing. I love them all. There's, it, it's hard to choose a favorite. They're all great. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you. All right, we have one final question from my devious cohort, Mr. Steider here. Oh. Hey, everyone. Uh, 
this is actually kind of uh, attached to the question that he had, um, and I just came, this, came up with this momentarily. Uh, what part of making comics is actually harder than most people think it is? Well, I think a lot of people think that, oh, sorry, that a lot of people think that it's, you know, like, I, I see, like, a lot of people that'll, like, complain about the comics, and they'll be like, well, I know fan artists that can do better, and I think a lot of people don't understand the amount of work it is and it's it's like as, as someone that's done like my own like comics on the side for fun like it's easy to spend like a month on like a page or something and make it look amazing but it's like obviously you don't have the luxury of time every time so i feel like i feel like a lot of people underestimate that you don't get time to yeah, really the, you know the grind pull all out yeah it's a time time mostly Okay, yeah. perfect. Yeah, I would say so. All right, well, thank you very much, folks, for attending. Thank you for reading, guys. Thank you so much for reading. So, once again, thank you, Bobby, Heather, Tony, Heather, and Jen.